Welcome back. I'm sure many of us enjoyed Spitting Image. Who can forget the way the show ruthlessly lampooned some of the biggest political figures of the time? John Major being greyed out, Norman Tebbit as a skinhead, and, of course, Margaret Thatcher chomping her cigar. Today, the satirical puppet show celebrates its 40th anniversary. Where has the time gone? Well, with me now is the man who himself provided the voice of Mrs Thatcher's puppet, Steve Nallen. Steve, we can have a look at some of your greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> let's, have, let's remember, right? Eh? Yes. Is anyone not unanimous? Mm. Um, it, we, um, we're slightly, uh, what's the opposite of unanimous? Tell him. <laughs> Animus. Wrong! The opposite of unanimous is fired! Uh, please, sir. Thank you. Geoffrey, mm. this is a French one. As a wife and mother, I still like to get the best meat bargains for my money. New Zealand lamb, 89 pence a pound. English lamb, 90 pence a pound. But for my money, the best value has got to be Falklands lamb. Only 1,435,000 pounds a pound. Delicious. I'd forgotten about that sketch. And you did that voice. Oh, goodness me, yes, I was there from the very, very first programme. Goodness me, 40 years ago tonight, isn't it frightening? And it was an amazing programme and did all sorts of things that people hadn't expected. You were much ruder about politicians than people had been before. Well, it, it, people talk about the punch and judy nature of politics. And in a way, because the, the spitting image had puppets in it, we were literally the punch and judy of politics. And you saw from that clip that there was far more violence uh, in that program than there'd ever been on, on television. But you could argue that, you, you know, that, that that came from uh, uh, the, the parliamentarians themselves who could be verbally violent. And you had a political impact that the relationship between David Steele and David Owen with um, Little David and Big David had a real effect on the Liberals and the SDP it, and how they were seen by the public. The irony there was it was pure chance because um, David Owen was made to be a big puppet and David Steele just happened to be a little puppet. But sometimes it, 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 it seemed to reflect the political reality of the day. Um, and, and that was, that was, that what we tried to do in general was, uh, you know, our, producer went down to the House of Commons and spoke to MPs and said, who's up, who's down, what are people like behind the scenes, and got an insight into what people were like. And that, 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 that then so fed on to the show. You were doing a lot of homework in building the show, and some politicians, you really helped. I mean, you helped uh, Norman Tebbit's image and made him an even more popular figure as this great tough thug. Uh, Roy Hattersley, I did him. He was the um, the, the you eponymous didn't, you hero didn't help of Roy spitting image yes. because he was the only character who did the spitting, and he quite liked it because he said to me, "He said, you know, I I went to speak at the police convention last week, and I went onto the podium, and as I began to speak, the entire first four rows put up umbrellas." <laughs> And he saw himself as a sort of an avuncular figure, uh, whereas other characters, uh, Kenneth Baker, for example, uh, we portrayed him a and, and as a great political tradition in caricature as, a, as, a, as an animal, as a slug. And in fact, Roy Hattersley said to me, he said, facing him across the dispatch box, I think you've got the slug perfectly correct. <laughs> uh, so I don't think uh, probably Kenneth Baker wasn't terribly happy about that. So I think some people, some people were, we were kind to to some than others, I think. And, and your ability to the accents is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the, your Roy Hattersley is exactly how he sounds. How well, you, you don't need to caricature Roy Hattersley because that's the way he speaks. Um, <laughs> with Mrs Thatcher, it was more complicated because um, she had a much higher voice when we began and she had that traditional way of speaking. Please, please let me finish, it's an important point. Well, what's and so funny is you move like that, you don't have movements. Well, it's part of it, to get the voice you've got to move like. Uh, but they said to me, look, th th this is, you know, this is what the puppet looks like. It's a rather cruel, uh, yeah. you know, bit picture, and, and, and that was the intention. So I, uh, as you remember, the, the, there was no televising of the House of Commons in those days, it was purely on radio. So I listened to the radio, version of Mrs Thatcher, and in the House of Commons she was very different. The right honourable gentleman does not understand the nature 
a fiscal policy. He doesn't. And so I took that very harsh voice, right. which was crueler and, 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 and uh, much stronger, and it matched the puppet. The puppet. And you've got a book out, um, Destination Time Travel. A very, very yeah. different sort different of subjects. No, you're not me, you're not, it's not the time travel of puppets. No, no, we're not going back in time. It's a history of time travel in film and television, which I've written with Dick Fiddy of the uh, British Film Institute. And, um, yeah, it's, it's doing very well because there's, everybody loves time travel. And in a, in a way, we all have our memories, which is the great human gift of time travel, and, and it's great to remember Spitting Image tonight. Well, we've travelled back 40 years in... Um, a few sentences, and it's been great fun. Just a brief word on the Queen Mother. Oh, I decided to do her as Beryl Reed because we didn't know what she talked like, so I borrowed uh, Marlene that she did because the Queen Mum and Beryl Reed spent all day being a credit to the nation. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. For those of you who are too young to have seen it, it was a most entertaining and funny programme, and the politicians who were lampooned, by and large, loved it. Anyway, thank you very much, Steve.